This is the Clearview 3 lens implant. It's designed to help patients undergoing lens replacement or cataract surgery to see near, mid, and far without glasses and without creating a nighttime halo effect with other premium lens implants that we've used in the past that are designed with rings in them. How well does the Clearview 3 work? Does it actually give great range of vision without a halo effect at night? Well, we're gonna show you when we use it in our first patient who has panoptics lenses in both eyes and is bothered by a halo. We're gonna walk you through his experience, start to finish, and ask him, and he'll tell you how well or not well this lens performs. Let's go. So you had surgery with the panoptics to both eyes last year, correct? That's right, yeah, August last year. And your vision's 20-20 far away and 20-20 close. So let me show you what that means. LNVPC. Perfect. So that's 20-20 vision far away. This is the 2020 size print on this card. And would you read out loud this smallest size print? Yeah, moon, shape, jump, easy, light. Okay, so you can read 2020 from, that looks to be about 18 inches from your eye. So you're in focus, you're 2020 far, 2020 near, but you are not happy with this lens implant from your right eye, what bothers you? What were the top two things that bother you? Yeah, so I absolutely thrilled with the vision, close up as you saw and, and distance, that was the life changing for me, frankly, you know, to, to be able to just pick up and not have to pick up glasses and be able to do the basic things. Um, the, the challenge I found is because of the halo effect with this particular lens, um, it doesn't bother me kind of casually of walking around of an evening so but when I'm driving a car, the oncoming lights, I can see the halos and they it's not just like how you see a halo around the moon. Uh, you know, it's kind of soft. It's like very prescriptive, like circular dots, like concentric circles. Um, and the problem with driving with that for me is then it's difficult for me to actually judge the distance and the speed at which the cars are coming towards me, which of course is, can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, and then the same as reverses, you know, if I've got cars in front of me of a night and they all hit the brakes, I can see all the red lights and everybody's braking, but it's the same challenge is that because of the halos, it's difficult for me to judge how far away those cars are actually are from me. So that's been the primarily the, the, I'd say the most uh, distressing uh, of, of, the, of the results. And it's a little bit of a kind of shadow, where if, I, if I hide the light, it's no problem, but when there's eyes, you see a little shadow in peripheral vision. So. Those are the two things that I'm like, hmm, you know, it would be kind of good to improve those. Beautiful. So what I tell people is there's a 98% chance they're going to see great with their panoptics. There's a 1% to 2% chance they won't like it. And if they don't like it, then what do we do? We do what we call intraocular lens exchange. And so we remove your panoptics. And by the way, can you share your age? Oh, that means I should remember that. Yeah, 56 just okay, to, you But see, don't tell anybody else. Okay, that. so you're 56. <laughs> So you see 20, 20 far, 20, 20 near, but you don't like the quality of vision, especially at night, because you feel unsafe when you drive. So you're in that one to 2% of, so let's say we put in 100 pan optics, we take out one or two of them, and then we do, uh, we place another alternative lens. In your case, it'll be the Clearview 3 lens. And so the basic difference is, this is the design of the pan optics. It has rings, which give great range of vision but it gives a halo at night. We are going to use this lens called the Clearview 3 lens. It has no rings in it, but it has this like little bifocal area, which is gonna give him far mid and near vision, but hopefully less halo. So this will be the first Clearview 3 we're using. Um, it's panoptics exchange for Clearview 3. Yeah, see you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how are you? Great. We're ready to rock and roll. Perfect. So we're just gonna moisten the surface of your eye. That looks good. Uh -huh. That looks good. Keep looking straight ahead, perfect. And then we're gonna infuse some additional anesthetic.
We fill the eye with viscoelastic and then we elevate the lens implant from within the capsular bag using viscoelastic. A Connor wand is used to dial the implant into the anterior chamber. Then IOL forceps and cutters are used to bisect the lens. And then the lens is removed in two pieces. Let's look at it. So up and right. So this would be how I would deliver it Correct. in this orientation here. The clear view lens is then inserted into the capsular bag through our original 2.8 millimeter incision. Correct. That's how 90% of the okay, got it. So when I lift here, I should not see the circle Correct. on the haptic. If I pull on it a little bit, no notch, no notch, hundred percent. Okay. Bottom left. What should be bottom left? The orientation marker should be right where. Oh, on on the screen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Pressure's good. I'm um, gonna double check you. Water tight. I think we're done. Okay, Gavin, you did great. How are you feeling? Um, good, yeah. Good, I'm going to put an eye drop on your eye. Good, I'm going to take this away. It's a little sticky like there's a big band-aid coming off. Good job. And then we'll use a moist towel. Good, I'm going to clean around your eyelid. And then I will see you tomorrow and we'll find out how you're doing. All right, so everything went well. Good. So, good job, Gavin. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> this is smaller than 2020. Can you read that? 2015. It's kind of coming in and out a little bit. It looks like B O N K Z. Hey, that's a little bit harder than That's good. So you're yeah. better than 2020. Read that one. That's the 2020 line. That's E F P D V. Yeah. And then let's test your reading visions. Okay. Hold this for me. And uh, yeah. Can you hold it where at the distance where it's in sharpest focus? I want you to read this row right here. Uh huh. This one right here. What's it say? Moon shape. Good. That's, that's a jump. Yeah. The last word is light. It's good. So it's basic. And now check it with your other eye. Is that easier or more challenging? Or about the same? It's about the same. Moon shape, jump, easy, light. Yeah. So I couldn't quite catch the easy. Okay, I could see it began with the E, but I couldn't quite catch got the it. It's still 2020, each eye yeah. near. What do you notice just in this room, the difference between your right and left eye? Any, any difference at all? What does it look about? It looks about the same. It looks about the same. Yeah. And then if you're looking at like, uh, if I'm shining this light at you here, um, what do you notice? Um, this one's a little bit of halo in around. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, That's the panoptic's left eye. Yeah, and this one, there's, there's no distinct halo, just yeah, just perhaps a little bit of, kind of like when you're looking at the moon through the clouds, but I did put eye drops in the short while ago. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. Yeah, so this one's got the very distinctive circles on this side. Uh -huh. And this one we did yesterday has got no, no, no circles, clear circles. View, no yeah. circles. So if I shine like, uh, I take this away, we're interrogating you in different ways. But yeah, that's got very clear concentric uh, circles. I'm shining, I'm shining this at him, okay. And then what about the clear view eye? No, it just looks like a bright light just extend it out, yeah. No, Norm no, no pretty circles. normal? Pretty normal, yeah. Okay, cool. And then let's see how you look through the microscope here. Okay. Come on forward. There is that little segmented area, kind of in retro illumination. So we said the distance part is probably toward the, it's on the right side of that shadow here at 
2 to 8 o'clock, the distance area is there, and the near area is there. And then if we slide over to your panoptics eye, retroillumination of a panoptics lens. So you see a halo from your left, you don't see a halo from your right because of the design of the lens. So, how did your eye feel today? Good. Yeah. No. No. Uh, no. No pain actually. So okay. I didn't need to take any painkillers. Just uh, just to drops for the dry eye and yeah, it's really good. And uh, okay. Any questions? I might just see what it's like driving at night in a few days and see if we can get this one. <laughs> so right. So <laughs> see how it goes. There will be strengths and weaknesses of yeah. each lens. So my instinct is, if your night vision is satisfactory, it's okay leaving your left implant alone. Because right. it probably has different strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So the left, you know, they kind of complement one another. Right. And if the nighttime halo is mitigated because your right eye doesn't have much of a halo, I would leave the Just left leave, eye yeah. alone. Yeah. But other, so you're our first patient and so far it looks like a winner. It's interesting. So let me let me actually test something. You have a bifocal, but let's say let's say you're looking at we're gonna have a look at these little numbers here. Okay. So um, if if you use your left hand to cover your left eye and you hold this, do you perceive that you read any differently based on how where you hold it? Like if you hold it above your above your head or below your head, does it seem to s read the same regardless um, of position? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've got a little bit of after vision for the light, but the point is, like I'm looking at this row here, for example, where the yeah. starts with the number four. Yeah. And if I've got it down here, kind of where I would hold a book, uh -huh, uh -huh. it's much clearer. Uh -huh. When I hold it higher, it kind of blurs out a little bit. What if you tilt your head up a little bit? Well, if I tilt my head up, it goes clear again. Interesting. What yeah. if you move it a little to the right and left? To the left, felt like it blurred out a little bit. To the right, stayed sharp. But, but in the center, that sharpness that I perceive right there uh -huh. is kind of the same sharpness as to the right. Uh -huh. Does it so get sharper little... when you go down? Or no? Pretty much stays about the same. Okay. What if you go up a little bit? It kind of loses the sharpness a little bit going uh -huh. up. Uh -huh. Diagonally up, it's losing. But I'm also almost in periphery there, so yeah. come back here. I mean, I can still tell it's a four. Yeah. But the sharpest is here, all the way to there. It's Fine. sharp, and then it's a little Fine. bit blurred out here. Yeah. Most people don't look up to read. Okay, yeah. great, thank you. Sure. Thanks for letting us do this. So that was reassuring. That was our very first patient who received the Clearview lens. His original lens that the patient had was designed with rings in it, the Panoptics, which is a great lens. It gives full range of focus, but because of these little rings in the lens design, some patients will be bothered by halos around lights at night, for example, when they're driving. The Clearview lens has a different design. Of course, you cannot see any rings in this lens, but you have a little segmented bifocal. And it's interesting that it does work, and it works whether the lens is positioned one way or another way, it gives full range of focus. But because of this design, not having rings, the halo effect of a Clearview lens is less than the halo effect of a Panoptics lens. And we'll continue to use new lenses like the Clearview 3 going forward, and I'll share with you our patients' outcomes using these new lens implants. Thank you for your time, and thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.